All right, guys, before we get into how we ended up with this monstrosity sitting behind me here, I first wanted to say, make sure you hit that subscribe button because according to our analytics, only 50% of you are subscribed and we want this to be a massive year for Aussie Arbos. This project on its own is just nothing like we've en ever undertaken before. So we want to get to 100,000 subs by the end of the year. So if you enjoy the content, enjoy the videos, make sure to get subscribed and hope you guys enjoy this episode. All right, guys, welcome back to Aussie Arvos. It's been a long time coming, but we are finally pulling apart the old faithful Leafy Patrol. Um, this is the first episode filmed in 2023 now, and it's been a long build up to this point because for a long while, and only until just recently, this was still my daily driver. I'd been looking for ages for another car, and I'd finally found one, got it fixed up, roadied on the road. Um, I will show you guys what, I've, what else I've bought in, in a little bit. And this whole time, this is what I've been working on. So this is my new runaround car. It is a BA Falcon uh, dedicated gas barra. Um, it looks in pretty good condition now, but when I bought it, I only paid two grand for it and it needed a fair bit of work to get it on the road. So I've done like, I've been right over the whole thing. I've had to put new struts in, all new rear wheel bearings, had to do rust repairs, gas tank stamping, which is more of a pain in the ass than you'd think. Um, yeah, so just a lot of work, but it's finally on the road and this is purely to get me from A to B and cart patrol parts around. So I didn't buy another four wheel drive because I just wanted something cheap to run, uh, easy to maintain. So yeah, that's the new car. So if you see that floating around in the background, you know what it's there for. So yeah, with that out of the way, let's start pulling down this patrol. And before anyone asks, no, I'm not going to put this in the patrol. Not yet anyway. Um, but yeah, so that means now that I've got another car, I don't need this anymore so we can finally pull it apart. So we're literally just gonna start stripping it down. Pretty much start with all the accessory based stuff. Um, leave it like mobile for as long as possible so I can move it around the house to where I need. So we'll start with all accessory stuff, bull bars, snorkels, trays, mirrors, all that sort of stuff that doesn't need to be on there for the car to run. And um, we'll go from there. Is it sad to be tearing it apart? I don't, oh no, half of the stuff I can't, oh, like I don't want on there. I, I, like even if I wasn't doing this build, I reckon I would have torn it off anyway. <laughs> right. Just because it needs to all be re redone and replaced. So it actually I think will feel good getting rid of all the mess and crap. Starting from fresh. Yeah. All right, so first thing I'm gonna start with these, the rock lights. Um, there's like an excessive amount of wiring for those and they just take a lot of space. So I'm gonna rip all them off quickly. And then I reckon after that, I might take the second battery system out with the second battery out, I can take out accessories inside the car as well as lights on the tray um, and then the canopy can come off as well. So we'll start doing that. This is a funny thing because throughout this video, we're going to have everything that we take out, we're going to have footage of you putting it in. Mm. <laughs> and you can look back and think, why did I do so that? Why, was, why am I stupid? <laughs> Already pulled a bit out. Yeah, yeah. weight saving. Please. Literally, weight saving and, and decluttering. They're still good, they, they can still be used. Yeah. Isn't it funny? You literally tear a car apart in a day even though it might take you like 12 months to put all this shit on it. How much more? How much weight? I don't know, maybe a kilo or two. This, actually, this spare's gotten me out of a lot of trouble actually. Uh, have you ever used a spare tire on any of your cars? No. no I'll use this twice. All right, so next it was time to remove the canopy. Now, if you don't remember, I bought this canopy a while ago and when we got it, it was in a pretty sad state. So we had to do a fair bit to fix it up, but we wanted to do it all on a budget and have a cheap sort of canopy set up. When we did it, we had to do a few things. I lowered the tray on the car to make it sit better. I also did a fair bit of repairs to the canopy itself, such as respraying and welding through holes, and then managed to add in some 12 volt gear too but it's time to pass it on to the next person. So if you are interested in this canopy, let us know, send us a message on the Instagram because I will be looking to sell it as I won't be using it in the new build. Look at all the soot. That's oh my God. Yeah, cause that's what I... <laughs> Holy <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Is that what your car is putting out? I don't know. That's oh my a, no, God. It's just because this was down. It's just because this was down. How black it is. Oh that's my like, god. Now talking about paint, it's like the blackest black. That's what that is. That is like you can't you see can't out. Like light off it. How much of your car is sudden? I don't know, because it's cold. It's, that's just what happens. That's just 
That's soot life. Of TD42, you know? My Jesus. <laughs> I actually rate him so hard because the catch rate. The goes good too. <laughs> Oh, we never made a video when we made these, did we? No. Yeah, they're the custom recovery points. Yeah, keep going. I'll give mine a good kick, hang on. Right. Ta -da. Tough. <laughs> Imagine if they didn't put a bar on this thing. Like, they look, look, at the they look so cool. Pull bar, let's put... It just makes them look... It just, they just look like a little comp truck. Very square at the front. Yeah, I know, they're flat as. Flat as. Yeah. I, I can't believe people drive around on the road like that. Like some people do, they literally they just stick the number plate like on the front of the chassis rail or something. All right, so the bull bar is off with all the accessories. The side steps or sliders are also off now. Uh, I'm gonna take off the snorkel next, which I'm actually very intrigued or interested to do this because like, had all this not have been happening, this has always been something that I wanted to change, the snorkel. Not that it's uh, unsatisfactory in how much airflow it lets through, but I don't think it is fully waterproof and my intake system is not completely watertight. So it's always something I wanted to change, which obviously with the new build will be getting addressed. Uh, but yeah, these are a pretty sort of rare snorkel, um, so like factory option. But yes, yeah, so I'm just interested to see how it's all plumbed up on the inside and that sort of thing. So yeah, let's zing it off. Oh my God. Oh no, look at all that scunge. Yeah, well that's the stuff they put on from the factory to protect the paint. easier to get to everything now. How's that five tray mounts aside? Yeah, wow. Big sprung. <laughs> All right, so the tray is off. Um, first impressions. Amazing how much of a difference a tray makes to a car. It's, yeah, it looks really weird like this. Anyway, um, first thing I wanted to look at when the trays come off is the whole fuel system setup. Now, I'm still unsure of, because I've been told a lot of different things as to whether these will fit in the new uh, coil sprung chassis. So I, I think this rear tank is the same. Um, obviously, the places that it mounts to are different, but I think the tank itself is the same. So there are bracketry on the new chassis that I believe should mount up to this tank. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. Um, otherwise, we'll see whether we have to do something custom in terms of brackets or even just get um, chassis that suit, uh, sorry, tanks that could suit a uh, coil cab chassis or coil chassis. Um, also, because this is twin tanks, it's obviously got all the stuff to support twin tanks. So it's got a couple different um, just electric valves or solenoids or whatever you want to call them. Uh, to control the fuel switching between front and rear tank. And I'm hoping to like maintain that because actually the system works really well. Like I've got 140 liters combined here, which gets me a thousand Ks, which is sweet. Um, and the system works, no dramas at all. So I'll probably have to make up a few different bits and pieces to transfer this system over, but 
it's, uh, it's worked well for me so far, so I want to hold on to it. Yeah, while it's in a state like this, obviously I'm going to give this a good clean up before you start pulling it apart, because there's nothing worse than just dirt and bits, you know, covering bolts and falling all over you. So I'll get the gurney out and I'll give this all a good spray, because like this, like this has like literally 30 years of dirt build up in here. Like it's actually ridiculous how much dirt builds up in some of the little sections here. So I'll get the gurney out, give it a good clean over. Um, but yeah, with that done, it'll just be up to, like it'll essentially be going from where the car can drive to where it can't drive anymore. So it'll be strip the interior and then disconnect all the engine bay so that we can lift the cab off. All right, this is why I bought this thing, the cart patrol bits. Oh, actually, if anyone, if, oh, this is a one for anyone. If anyone cares, so the previous owner of this car who actually watches the channel, so he, um, he had named this car the Green Wheelbarrow because he just used it to cart parts. So all my mates have adopted that same name. So it is the Green Wheelbarrow and that's what it will be used for. Wheelbarrowing patrol bits. <laughs> ah, last drive, that's it, that's all it needs. Uh, just pulling the mirrors off. I probably, I most likely will reuse these because I do like them, like they're good mirrors. But what I'm going to do in the new car, or the new, I'm going to get new doors, and I'm going to shift these forward, probably like a good 200 mil, so they're right at the front of the door. And not only is that better for the hinges, but it'll look better. The viewing angles will be better. Yeah, so definitely doing that. All right, so with that, we've pretty much got the interior stripped and I've just taken the mirrors off as well. Now, I just will address, obviously, the dash is still in the car. Now, I'm not gonna be pulling the dash out, one, because it's a lot of work, and two, I would pull the dash out in the case that I wanted to respray the interior, but obviously, I've already got all my sound deadening in the cab and I'm not pulling that up. Um, the paint, I don't know if you remember when we installed this originally, the paint underneath is actually in really good condition. There was no rust or corrosion of any kind. Uh, so I'm happy to leave this all in here. I will obviously give this a bit of a clean, but I, I'm assuming, well, not assuming, but I'm pretty certain you can lift the cab off with the dash still inside. So that's what I will be hoping to do. So dash is staying in, but with all that, that pretty much completes the um, dis disassembling of all like the bits that I would consider like accessories or non-essentials to the car. So like the trays and bull bars and interiors and stuff. Like I, I feel like everything from here on is pretty essential to the operation of the car and, it, and its structure. So yeah, that's where we're gonna leave it for this one. Uh, next time we will be actually like properly dismantling the car into bits and pieces. So we're gonna start with all the panels will be coming off, uh, disconnecting everything from the engine ultimately so that we can lift the cab off the car. So yeah, if you enjoyed this one and you wanna see the next one, make sure you give it a like, give us a comment down below, let us know what you think and also make sure to get subscribed and hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.